Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another educational lesson. So, the last couple weeks, guys, I've had uh, about two videos out there on the three bar play. It's got a lot of interest from folks. I've gotten a lot of phone calls, emails, etc. I'm happy that I could help you guys. It seems like many of you are using it very effectively. However, as is always the case, there's always some negative Nellies out there uh, that think they're special and think they're cool by calling somebody out on stuff uh, and saying, well, it's easy to put a video like that out there in hindsight. So what I've done, guys, is over the last four or five days, I've recorded my myself trading all day long. So I've taken about five three bar plays in the last five or six trading days. So what I've decided to do is put those three bar plays on the screen for you guys here in a couple minutes. And I'm not just putting up the slide. I'll put up the slide first. And then after I put the slide up, I'm also going to put the live video of my live entry fills and my live exit fills on all of those. So you could see that this wasn't some hindsight BS. I did it in real time. Okay, now I didn't record all of them. Some of them are just slides, but of the six or so, I think four of them I recorded. So you get to see four out of the six with real time fills, real time entries, real time exits, et cetera, and so forth. And there's even a couple, one on AIG that started off really well and then it came back against me and stopped me out okay so that happens too a lot of people are asking what's the batting average i try to hit two to one targets and when i do the batting average is usually about 50 percent if you're shooting for huge targets three four five six to one your batting average is going to be a lot less than that 30 35 percent if you're shooting for really small targets like one to one your batting average is going to be a lot higher probably 60 or 65 percent so management is a give and take and that has a big impact on how often these patterns work. They're mainly hit and run patterns. Now, another aspect of today's video that I wanna show you, only the first five or 10 minutes is gonna be on a three bar play. I think that's played out a little bit, so to speak. Then I'm going to put on a video that I did in the chat room, guys, from a couple days ago on psychology, trading psychology and level two. See, there's a lot of places out there that just show you a chart and say, trade this, you'll be a millionaire. That's BS, that's not how trading works. It takes a very long time to get good at this business. Okay, you're not gonna watch some five minute video and magically turn that into gazillions of dollars. I get people that call me, hey, Jared, I have $100. Can I make a 100,000 this year? No, you can't, despite what some of these other educational firms are telling you. It's called bullshit. Okay, the point I'm making is trading is a wonderful business, but it's not an easy business, but it takes time to get good at. Okay, so I want you guys to see all aspects of it. So you're gonna see the three bar play, um, the three bar plays that I've been trading the last week or so, but you're also going to see a nice about 30 minute video on level two and trading psychology where I club people over the head. This is an inside look in the chat room of how I speak to my traders in the chat room, okay? When I'm out here on YouTube, guys, you know, you're just drawing attention, getting people in to watch your stuff. But when you're actually trading with me, I'm gonna club you over the head if you do something stupid. And a lot of traders do a lot of stupid stuff, and that's why the industry gets such a bad rap. Okay, so stick around after watching the trades, stick around for a psychology and level two lecture. It's very good, you don't wanna miss it. And the reason you don't wanna miss it is the vast majority of people fail in this business because of terrible money management. All you guys are out there with $5,000 accounts risking $500 a trade. That's crazy, absolutely crazy. And one last quick comment before I get into it. Um, guys, you can do this with less than $25,000, but you have to get around the pattern day trading rule, okay? So you either need a prop account, which we need a series 57 for, or you need an offshore account that's not really kosher or SEC certified in the United States, okay? Or you can just take three trades a week if you have less than that. You could have a three or $4,000 account, but you're limited to three trades a week. Now, again, if you're in Europe, that's not an issue. If you're in Asia, that's not an issue. This is a United States problem, so to speak, okay? So just to answer that, because I've been getting a lot of questions and emails, and one last comment also, yes, this pattern is valid on Forex. I'm going to put two charts on the screen right this very second, so bear with me, all right, on the Aussie Yen, two charts showing a three-bar play. So yes, yes, and one more yes. The three-bar play is valid in Forex. It's valid. If you can chart it, it's valid. Okay, guys, 
So if you want to be a successful trader, guys, stop listening to most of the internet hype and BS, how you can turn, you know, three or $400 into a hundred thousand in 50 days. It's garbage. Okay. It's just not real. And they're flat lying to you under the premise that it is real. Okay. So I want to show you guys some real trades with real fills. Some of them worked, some of them didn't, but they're all three bar plays to answer the question. Yes, this happens every day. These patterns happen every day. And to the people out there, emailing me say, well, if you're telling the whole world about this three bar play, it's not going to work anymore. And if you're really an honest trader, you wouldn't give your secrets away. Guys, have I perfected the three bar play? Yes. Did I come up with the three bar play? No. Technical trading has been around for decades, decades. If you think your little 500, 1,000, 2,000 share lots are going to move the market, you are sorely mistaken. Okay. The big boys are trading millions of shares. You are nothing in comparison. You're like a little shrimp that the whale just eats when he passes by. So don't give me that garbage that you think me putting it out there to 200,000 people or 100,000 people is going to move the market. It doesn't. Not everybody's going to take the same trades every day. You're making the assumption that a million people are going to be trading the same stock. Guys, three bar plays happen on hundreds of stocks every day. The hard part is it's our job to find them. And I typically use gaps and dollar gainers and dollar losers to do that. They happen on all time frames, and no, they do not have to happen right off the open. They can happen anytime. So enjoy the live trading actual fills and then enjoy the psychology and level two lecture. Jared Wesley, have a great day. See you guys next time and don't forget to subscribe. So guys, this is a chart of MMM and in about three seconds, you're gonna see me trading it live. MMM guys, let's watch MMM. Um, five minute three bar play, MMM guys. Okay, here it is. MMM guys, 188.30 by 189.25. MMM, 188.30 by 189.30. Okay. All right. MMM 188.30 by 189.30. Five minute three bar play right there. Take off this pre market. There it is, right there. It's actually more of a 70 cent stop. Um, yeah, I like it. Okay, I like it. See, there's MMM, guys. MMM just triggered, okay? We'll see what happens with it. These three bar plays are momentum trades and they usually hit and run. So um, it is what it is. Come on, MMM. Come on, baby. If you use the 70 cent stop, this is 1R right here. All right, took a little off of MMM, guys. 100 of my 500. Just taking a screenshot, that's all. No biggie. All right, just taking a screenshot. I took 100 of my 500 off. and stop is break even. Still wanna to try to get a little bit more out of it. Another 50 to 70 cents. Okay. Not quite two to one, right? I end up getting uh, about 1.6 to one on our money, which isn't perfect. Okay. We go, guys. All right, I'm gonna walk here. Okay. All right, I'm out. Okay. Took 522 out of that textbook three bar play. Textbook wide bar, narrow bar, drop. The problem. All right, guys. So here's a three bar play on Apple that you can see the pre market chart on 790,000 shares. You can see the beautiful gap on it right here on the daily chart and then a wide bar narrow bar blast off on the 15 minute chart entry was 212 stop was 211 and it went to 215 dollars three to one on your money this happened right around 10 a.m 10 10 so another beautiful chart the next one will be cvs guys trading 
the 15-minute three-bar play on CVS. Check this one out, guys. It's really nice, and I'm going to put up the live video feed for you right now. Check it out. The problem with CVS, guys, is the daily chart. See it right there? You know, 57.60, 57.70. You know, that's my only concern here. But I like the strength um, so much that I'm going to put an order in for it, guys. We did earlier. It's not a surprise I'll do it again. Um, CVS 57 by 56.50. But CVS just triggered. And filled me eight cents late. Wow. Okay. That means you gotta get an eight cent late fill. That was fun. We need the whole number on this, guys. You know, granted, you might go, wow, that's nice, Jared, but I got filled eight cents late. My order was at 98 or 99. And it just blew right through me. So I that's the top end of my range. Right? That's the top end of my range. And that you know a big difference so again guys uh, not no change here yet on cvs um you know we need at least a half number here to move up and like i said got filled late on this so we'll see um, so cvs hanging in there guys just took a little more off guys of cvs and um I started with a thousand, but I actually started with Westman call at 900 because I got filled so late. CVS needs a pullback, guys. The problem with CVS is the pullback is probably going to be right where our entry is. Right. So it was actually a really good pop, you know, 50 cent stop, 67 cent move. But, you know, when you take a look at this realistically, you need a pullback. You just hope it pulls back to like 5715 instead of 570. I'm going to keep an eye on QCOM. The only negative, as you know, on QCOM is it's got some junk above it. You know what I mean? Okay. I like QCOM right here with about a 60 cent stop. Um, I'm going to give this a shot, guys, on QCOM. All right. 87.80 by 87.10, guys. 87.80 by 87.10. Come on. I just, just froze up on me. My platform just froze. Hello. I'm frozen right now. There's nothing I can do. All right, there we go. I don't know what happened there. My platform completely froze on me. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, come on back up. All right, stop break even, guys, on QCOM. I don't have that much locked on this. I don't have that much locked. Stop break even on QCOM. I know that was a verbal call. Um, stop break even on QCOM. All right, stop break even on QCOM. We can do better on this. All right, we can do better on this. All right, guys, I only have 100 left of QCOM, guys. All right, I'm going to be out QCOM soon. All right, we get just another pop here. All right, I'm going to be out of QCOM here. All right, out QCOM for 650. Uh Guys, here is a really nice three bar play or wedge if you want to on this particular pattern on MAXR that I actually missed on this particular day. I got OLED three bar play that you're going to see in just a moment, but I missed this MAXR and I'm kind of bummed. It was beautiful, just perfect, but Unmall did get it. So the chat remembers got it, but we still got OLED, which you're about to see. Guys, here's a five minute three bar play on OLED, 186 by 182. Um, man, can we get $8 out of it? You know, the spread on it is about a dollar. 
I mean, we could try a $3 stop on it, but that's about... I'm going to keep an eye on this, guys. All right. On OLED. I like that five-minute three-bar play. The only negative, right, the only negative is it's a wide stop. I don't know if it's got five bucks left in it. So here it is, OLED. Um, actually, we're gonna have to pull that in a little bit. Hold on one second. OLED, guys, 185.60 or 185.70 by 182.70, all right? OLED, 185.70 by 182.70. Uh, OLED, guys, is gonna trigger here soon. This is a, a whippy, spready stock, so I'm just letting you know, be careful, all right? Whippy, 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 whippy. Okay. So we'll see. It just popped a dollar, a little, little less than a dollar. Okay. Let's see if we can get another, I don't know, four bucks from. <laughs> 190 would be a solid target on this thing, even though that's not a very big gain. Okay. I mean, three dollars up. Technically, we need like one ninety one, right? So we need a lot. We'll see what happens. Okay, uh, have your stop in on this. Why? Because this is an, a nasty whippy stock. Okay. All right, a little more guys on OLED. Get that stop to one eighty six if you want. Okay, on OLED. All right, so 186 stop on OLED. I'm really just riding out a very small lot on this thing, okay? This is kind of the, the mistake of the day in terms of management, right? So we, get, we break 190, I'm gonna walk away on it, guys, okay? I'm gonna get about a half hour gain on it. We need Amazon to go, guys. If Amazon works today, eh, we might we might have a shot at five hundred or a thousand bucks today if Amazon works. Ah, come on, OLED. What's that all about? Right, we're just about to hit target on OLED. You guys see that? And now it's like coming back in. Oh well, have your stops in on OLED. We'll make a few hundred on it. Yeah, Cliff, great job, man. I, I messed that up. I should have made 700 on Amazon. I really, taking those 20 shares off really, really did me in, you know? Remember I said I took a quarter off? That's what did me in. I just didn't trust it. You believed and I didn't. Well, I mean, like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've done a really, really poor job of managing today. Okay. And the reason being is most of these trades, when we first took them, really looked kind of crappy. And I started taking, you know, a quarter of my shares, a third of my shares. If I was doing all or nothing, we'd be having a monster day today. I'm actually impressed with OLED. I told you guys earlier, I said, man, this is a beautiful three bar play, but really extended, right? And I don't like to take $100, $200 stocks that are already up 15 to 20%. And this thing is exactly that. So we're gonna be out of this thing. I'm I'm out. All right. I'm out OLED for 272 bucks. Okay. Um, so for a half R gain is what that comes out to, guys. Half R gain. All right. So if you guys noticed today, we've had a lot of choppiness. Even though we saw a lot of green, we didn't close a lot of green. Now, let me repeat that. We saw a lot of open green. We just didn't close a lot of green, right? Um, OLED for me would have been a break-even stop here, right? I always go break-even after they go one to one and a half to one. And right now we'd be exiting at break-even. So we actually did better than what we should have done, which is good because we did worse than what we should have done on Amazon. So they kind of cancel each other out, if that makes sense. Per my trading plan, 
these kind of cancel each other. We did worse on Amazon than we should have, only 516, we should have gotten 700. Uh, we did better on OLED than we should have. But where, where I kind of messed up was the second MNST trade, right? This thing almost stopped me out by 20 cents, but then it did bounce and it did go about one R. So we'll see what happens with it. I needed a big target on it. I only got about 200 bucks out of that. We're just gonna have to deal with 500 bucks today, guys. We're just gonna have to deal with 500 bucks today. Hey, let's dig in guys. This is gonna be about 30 minutes, maybe as much as an hour. If you have questions along the way, don't be bashful, don't be shy. Um, I try to do lectures in the chat room here every Wednesday. I haven't done them in a couple weeks, um, but I try to do a Wednesday lecture. Uh, it's hard because I open the room um, pretty much every day. So lectures are on days that uh, I have extra time in the afternoon, but psychology and level two. Um, these are kind of totally different topics and maybe shouldn't be put together at times, but it is what it is. So trading guys is all between the ears. Patterns, which we're gonna look at some here today. Patterns are easy. I know you don't think so, but in the beginning, the things that you'll likely learn the fastest, assimilate the quickest are patterns, okay? It's the psychology that takes a long time for you guys to really pick up and learn, okay? So when you think about it, this business is all mental. It's 99% mental, okay? At its core, at its very core, trading is simply a game of statistical probability. No matter how perfect the setup is, it could fail. No matter how poor a setup is, it could still work. The key to being a profitable trader is consistency approaching each trading day and each individual trade the same way every day. This is what gives us an edge. Then through proper money and trade management, we simply let this edge make us money. That's it. That paragraph is the epitome of technical analysis based trading. The reason that so many people struggle is because they cannot stay consistent. Right? Most traders do something different on Monday than they do on Thursday. And when you do that, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, You get out of one trade a little bit early, then you don't take your stop loss on another trade, and you need to have a trading plan to help you with that. But uh, there's a lot of reasons that traders do these things. But the number one reason, it's not fear, it's not greed, it's the need to be right. Because we all have a three-letter thing called an ego. Okay, so your job is simple in this business. Pick one or two patterns, three bar play, something else, apply it, use a two to one management and just let it go. And you do it every single day and then you'll slowly fine tune it. What I mean by fine tune it is, you'll get better at your entries. You'll get better at picking those strategies, okay? So that's it, right? That's trading in a nutshell. Statistical probability is all this business is, guys. For every trade, there's gonna be a losing trade, which means most traders, unless you're a big time scalper, right? Most traders are, are somewhere in the 50% batting average range. So if you're gonna bat 50%, that's okay, but make sure your winners are at least one and a half to two times the size of your losers. If you do that, you don't have any problems. It's funny how people always ask, oh, how often does this pattern work? It doesn't matter how often it works. It only matters how much you get from it when it works, okay? So let's do something real quick here. I want you to think about this, okay? Okay, hold on. Trader one, 50% batting average, makes two to one on their trades. That means when they win, they make twice as much as when they lose, okay? So they have a 50% batting average and they make two to one on their trades. So if, if they're risking $200, they make 400 when they win, okay? Here's trader two, all right? Trader two, 60% BA makes 1.5 to one on their trades. So this means if you're risking $200, when you win, you win 300, right? You're making 1.5 to one on your winners. So if you're risking 200, you make one and a half times that, which is 300 on your winners. Trader one, right? Trader one makes 400, which is two to one. Who makes more money? Anybody? Trader one or trader, just give me a one or a two. Trader one, trader two. Who makes more money? At the end of the month. Say they both took 100 trades. They both took 100 trades. Who makes more money? 
Take your time. There's no rush. I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Who makes more money, trader one or trader two? Anyone else? And then I'll, and I'll get to the answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Do the math. Do the math. 100 trades. You're going to be surprised at the answer. Okay? Trader won. 50 winners, 50 losers. Okay? 50 winners equals. What's uh, if you win 400 trades times 50, right? Sorry, not 400 trades. 50 trades times $400, you made 20,000. Okay? 20,000 on your winners and minus 10,000 on your losers equals net $10,000. Okay? You got it? Okay? So your winners made 20 grand. Oh, Roy, you're getting ahead of me, brother. Come on, brother. It's all right. So trader 2. Trader 2. 60 winners equals what? 60 times 300 is $18,000, okay? 40 losers equals $8,000. Net, $10,000. They made the same amount of money, but none of you guys knew that, or I shouldn't say none of you, very few of you knew that. How do you not? This is your job. This is your business. This is what you need to know. You always wonder why football teams, Formula One, race car teams, soccer teams, why do they track? Why do they have whole departments of people that track statistics? Why do they do that? Because clearly there's an edge in it. Right? Clearly they're looking for an edge. You need to do the same thing. This also applies to people with a 30% batting average. right? If you have a 30% batting average or 35 and you're getting three to one on your winners, it's not a whole lot different than somebody with a 50% getting two to one. What's the point here? The point here is it's not a matter of how often the trade works. It's a matter of how much you make when it does work. And statistically speaking, the smaller your target, the more often something will work. So if you're looking for like, I don't know, you're risking $200 and you're looking for 50 bucks out of a trade. Well, that's going to work like 80% of the time. Why? Because you're going to sell the pop every time a trade triggers. But if you're looking for five to one on your winners, that might only work 25% of the time. Does the money change? Not really. The money is very similar. So why am I telling you all this? Because we're not all the same. We're all different. Some of you guys are very patient. Some of you guys are very jittery. Some of you guys are in the middle. Why is that important? It's important to know where you stand because you need a management strategy that's going to be conducive to your personality style. That, ladies and gentlemen, is something nobody else will tell you. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been to a lot of courses, been to a lot of rooms. It's all about matching style with personality, right? Not the other way around. What everybody does is they go out and they build a trading plan. I go, why do you have that plan? Oh, well, because Unmall seems like he makes a lot of money, so I want to copy him. I said, well, are you and Unmall the same person? No. Do you know Unmall very well? Not really. So how do you know that his style, it wasn't even a shake, right, Trader Joe? It wasn't even a shake. It never really pulled back. What, what FLR did is actually very common. In fact, FLR only went to 88. It, it never even got close to the stop, right? But anyway, so my point getting back to this is you might be the same as Unmall personality-wise, but you might be totally different. You need to find what works for you. This is the one of the biggest, biggest problems I find with traders. They look at some boilerplate management strategy and they say, I'm going to do that. Well, I, it's okay to try that, but if you're struggling to follow it, it means it's not for you. Managements that are for you are easy to follow. You don't have a problem following them. So if you're really struggling with your management, it means it's probably not right for you, which means you might need to change it. 
And then once you find a baseline, a management that makes a little bit of money and is comfortable, then slowly try to improve upon it. It's just a game of odds. It's all this business is. So real quick, these bullet points, guys, this is a business, man. Like, I, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent because I don't want to get my motor all riled up here because you guys know, people that know me, when I get started, I don't stop. And I, I really can get pretty tough on people. This is a business. Treat it like one. If you're not going to, quit now. Save yourself the stress and save yourself the money. If you don't think that you're capable of treating this like a genuine business, walk away right now. Log out and never come back. Because if you don't, you're going to lose your shirt. Trust me, that trading account you're looking at that's got 100 grand in it or 30 grand or five, it's gone. It's gone. Not all of it, but half of it's gone if you don't treat this like a business. And the hardest part about treating this like a business, wait for it, no boss. You have no boss. Who's going to tell you to stop? When you're going on tilt, who's going to lock you down? Nobody. When you're taking a trade that you know you shouldn't be taking because it's not in your trading plan, who's going to stop you? Nobody. There's no accountability in this business. This is why it's so hard. It's why so many people struggle. So I always ask traders this question. Wow, man, that WLL just ripped. I always ask traders this question. If you were managing you, meaning if you were your own employee, would you fire yourself? Would you fire yourself? The answer should be 90% of the time, yes. I see what you guys do. Most of you should be fired. There's no way you can get away with the stuff, the shenanigans you do in trading at a regular job. Not doing your homework. Breaking the rules. When you go to a job, they put you through a training process, right? And that training process has rules and regulations. If you don't follow them, you get a warning. If you don't follow them again, you get another warning. A third time, they fire you. You'd be fired probably 10 times over in trading. How many times have you broken the rules of your plan? How many times have you done something you know you're not supposed to do? Like every day, you'd be fired, okay? So I guess that's sort of not really what I'm talking about at the moment, but I guess, Ron, you know, um, what I'm saying is lay out rules. Like this book, Trading Plan Essentials, lays out rules. Follow them. That's it. A business has rules. When you go work at Goldman Sachs, they have rules. And if you don't follow them, they just move on to the next person who will follow them. Why? Because those rules are proven to earn money. Guys, if you go out and buy a McDonald's and magically you add something to the menu that they don't want, what happens? They tell you to stop. If you don't, they yank your license. Why? Because McDonald's has a business model that prints money. Let me repeat this because you're not getting it. McDonald's has a business model that prints money. Why? Why on God's green earth would you ever go against their business model? 60, 70 years of profits, it prints money. Your trading plan, this, prints money. It prints, it's a license to print money. Why would you break it? It's an honest question. Why would you break a plan that prints money? Because you have no oversight. That's why. All right. I'm going to move on from this, guys. You have had enough time to kind of take a look at it. I want to get into some other stuff. All right. The first thing you have to understand in trading is that there is no holy grail. Everybody thinks that there's like one indicator or one style or one method that is just right? The Holy Grail. Nope. There is, there's no such thing because we're all different, right? We're all a little bit different. So what you want to try to do in the beginning, guys, is keep things very simple and stay consistent and see how that works for you and then make small adjustments. Your goal in trading is to maximize strengths and minimize weaknesses. That's it. Maximize strength and minimize weakness. Okay. Maximize strength, minimize weakness. So if you're a really good stock picture, pick, picker, maximize that. Pick really good stocks. If you're a poor trade manager, choose a management strategy that doesn't require you to be great. Maybe a set it and forget it management where you set a bracket order. You have your target, you have your stop, and you walk away. Like Unmall does with all or nothing. That's a management strategy for people that aren't great managers. But yet, it's one of the most profitable management strategies you can use, right? 
Let's see, so orders. I, I that's probably a good idea, Chana. You know, it's probably a good idea. Amen, Ron. And you're getting ahead of me, but you're absolutely right. The only way you're going to stick to your plan is if you truly believe in it, right? So you know that quote. I use it all the time around here. To say and not do, or sorry, to know and not do is to not know, right? To know and not do is to not know, right? So you're sitting there going, well, I know that's going to go higher, but I'm not going to take it. Or I know it's going to go higher, but I'm going to get out right here. Well, you don't really believe it then, okay? You don't really believe it. So here's the thing, guys. Let's take a look at some charts for a second, all right? You can see a few different patterns in here. I'm going to go over these quick because I don't want to be here all afternoon. This is a fairly standard breakdown, right? And I think most traders, I don't use moving averages, guys. These charts are somewhat old, okay? Most traders would look at that and go, you know, that's a pretty nice breakdown. Okay, kind of looks like WLL a little without the big move up. So I think generally speaking, a lot of traders would agree that that's a nice short play, nice breakdown right here, the stop up here. Okay, next question. Next chart, sorry. I think there's a lot of traders out there that would say, wow, over 142, this thing looks pretty good. And stop loss down here at like 141.25 or whatever it is. Boom, it's up a dollar in five minutes, right? You're breaking over some resistance. You had a nice consolidation. Looks pretty good, okay? I'm gonna keep moving on. There's like six or seven more of these. That's why I'm going quickly. Here's a stock that moves up pulls back to minor support or level one support, sorry, level two support, my apologies, level two support, minor support. You're gonna buy right here, put your stop there, boom, rips, right? So you're in it like, I don't know, 72.10, stop 72 bucks, the thing's up 40, 50 cents. Standard buy setup. This pattern's been around for 50 years. I didn't create it, I didn't invent it. Pretty straightforward, right? Stock is strong, it moves up, it pulls back to support, gives you a bottoming tail doji bar and rips. Cool, great, next. Oh, here's another breakout stock. Gaps down bullies, consolidates out, needs this resting period at $64. You buy it here, put your stop under here, rip. Okay, now you're thinking, well, it's only 50 cent move. Well, it's only a 10 cent stop. That's like five to one on your money. And in the first 10 minutes, you got two to one on your money. Okay. Here's one, a little different, a little bit of a climactic setup. Stock sells off from 72 down to 61. I mean, that's a massive sell-off, right? Massive sell-off. Buy over here, stop down here, rip. Okay, it's a climactic setup. It's what some of you were trying to do on SQ today. Didn't quite, didn't quite play out that way, but right? Rip. And again, I'm going through these fairly quick. Okay, I'm going through these fairly quick. All right. Here's another breakout. I don't know why there's a lot of breakouts in here. I just, when I put this together a couple few years ago, right? Consolidate, 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 buy here, stop here, rip, okay? I mean, you sit there and generally, generally speaking, people will look at these and go, ah, these are pretty decent patterns, right? Oh, and accountability in the early days trading, down for the, yes, it's so true. It's so true, Roy, because I don't want to get too far off tangent, but if you have one bad day a week and that bad day is bad, like four, five, six R, you're going to spend the entire rest of the week just getting break even, just getting back to even. And that doesn't make a whole lot of money, does it? Every week you're break even because of one bad day. Um, and I've seen that with traders. I'll see a trader where there's 20 trading days in a month and they'll have 15 up days and five down days. That's solid. That's solid. 15 up and five down and they lose money or break even for the month. How's that possible? Their down days are way too big because they don't quit, it's ego. So anyway, here's a stock under support, right? $9.60 is supported, drops, pops, drops. Nice sell set up, short it right there, put your stop right there, drop, okay? All of those patterns, okay, all of those patterns yeah, Muddy, it's, um, here, let me check real quick. It's 362.18. 362.18 here. One second. Bottom of the screen. All right, bottom of the screen right there. 
bottom of the screen towards the right hand side, not all the way to the right, two thirds to the right. 362.18. All right, back to the, um, the slides. Okay. All right. Which was really shitty because we were up a thousand. Um, all right. So we just looked at fairly quickly, but we just looked at like seven or eight slides. Okay. Generally speaking, okay, most people would agree that those are decent, decent plays. Why aren't you guys making more money? I mean, did anything in there look like it was NASA level rocket science? Now, some people will comment, oh, well, I can't find them. Well, that's why you're in here, right? Um, PBYI 15 minute, no, um, I'm not sure what you're looking at there on the PBY Tomo. I'll take a look in a minute. One, it's way too thin, but um, PBY, are you talking like under 3150? No, it's sitting right at support. Uh, and that's a stock that moved higher. I, I wouldn't do that. This thing's gonna move higher here. You'll see, it's gonna bounce here. Um, anyway, so what you believe guys has a dramatic effect on your outlook in trading and in life. So we looked at all those charts. Generally speaking, I usually I do a poll on those charts, but I didn't want to be here all day. Usually I, I spend like two, three minutes on each chart and I do a poll on each chart. What do you think? Rate the pattern from one to 10, 10 being great, one being crap. It's what I usually do, right? Most people will give most of those charts a seven or higher. So if those charts are a seven or higher, why aren't you guys all just killing it, making a ton of money? Because between your ears, you're messed up. You're all tongue tied and twisted like a pretzel. Because you don't really believe that that's an 8 out of a 10 or a 9 out of a 10. You don't really believe it. You say you believe it. You say it's a nice pattern, but you don't really believe it. If you believed it, you wouldn't be selling it too soon, would you? No, you wouldn't. Right? Am I wrong on that? No. That's the truth. Okay? What's the problem? There is no consequence. Tell me this, guys. All right? I'm going to use an extreme example. If you believed with every fiber of your being that the next time you walked across the street, you were going to get hit by a car and die, would you walk across that street? I'm going to assume the answer would be no. If you truly believed in your heart, man, this road is way too busy there's no way I can cross this street without getting hit. What would you do? You would find a different way. You wouldn't walk across the street. Why? Because the consequence is death. What's your consequence in trading? Nothing. You don't have a boss that's going to fire you. There's nobody even looking over your shoulder to tell you, don't do that. Hey, Johnny, don't do that. That, if you want to know why the business is so hard, that's the reason trading is so hard. It's not because you can't find good patterns. It's not because you can't recognize those patterns when you see them. It's not because you don't know the proper entry. It's not because you don't know the proper stop. It's not because you don't know the proper target. It's because you don't follow the proper entry, stop, and target. Because there's no consequence. So what if you don't do it? Who cares? I'll be better tomorrow. I'll be better next time. That's why so many people mess up. And it comes down to this, all right? It comes down to what we call mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply, guys, the capacity to be aware of your thoughts, beliefs, and biases. In, and that's key. The end of the sentence is the key. In real time. In real time. What this basically means is you're in the middle of a trade, your palms are getting sweaty and clammy, and you're saying to yourself, and I quote, I know I shouldn't get out of this, but gosh, it's so green. I got to take it. What if it pulls back against me? What if it pulls back? And then you get ahead of yourself and this, this vicious cycle starts happening. You start getting nervous, right? And your emotions start moving higher and your palms are sweating. Like, I got to take it. So you were mindful, right? You were mindful of the fact that you were nervous and jittery. But what you did about it was incorrect. Instead of saying, I know I'm nervous right now. I know I'm jittery right now. I know I want to get out of this trade right now. Instead of saying that and following it up with, 
I need to take a walk. You sit there and get out of the position. It's what you do. The flip side. Man, this is a good trade, man. UA should not have stopped out today. My gosh, that was a perfect gap, man. I mean, I looked at the book. I have the book next to me. I have my checklist here. This is a level one gap. It's over a wide range green bar, wide range red bar. This thing should rip today. Are you effing kidding me? It's pulling back against me. There's no way. I'm not going to let those computers tag me on this thing. There's no way I'm going to let those computers take me out on this. That's You're being mindful that this stock shouldn't have done this. But then is where you make the wrong decision. Instead of taking your stop loss like we did, you let it go. And then it goes a dollar against you. And now instead of losing... $200, like we're talking about, now you're down 500 Now you're down 700 And now you own that stock. You're no longer trading that stock. You're investing in that stock because for you to get your money back, you got to hold it for a week, maybe a month, maybe a day, maybe a year. That wasn't the intention of the trade. So you sit there and ask yourself, why? Ego. Yeah, you know, XYL is interesting, Roy. I'm tempted. It's kind of right here at 78 bucks. I agree, I like it, 78.20. That WLL was nice too. You need about a, what, a, anywhere from a 50 to 75 cent stop. So guys, XYL, keep an eye on under 78. So you come back, <clears throat> it's not a matter of not knowing what to do. It's a matter of not doing what you're supposed to do. My favorite quote around here, or one of, people do what is inspected, not what is expected. People do what's inspected, not what's expected. What's the only thing to stop you from speeding on the road? Police officer, consequence. What's the one thing for, to stop you from showing up an hour late to work every day? Your boss yelling at you and then eventually finding you or firing you. Consequences, what's to stop you from selling a trade too soon? Nothing. What's to stop you from not taking a stop loss on a trade? Nothing. You better find some level of consequence in this business, some level of accountability in this business, or you won't make it. Now, there might be one or 2% of you that don't need that accountability. You're just naturally that way. But for the other 98%, which is most of you, because you're not likely in that 2%, even though you think you are, okay? You need a spouse or a friend or a family member or somebody. Why do I do what I do in the chat room? Because it's in front of 100 people every day. So if I do something stupid or bad or wrong, you all get to see it. That's my consequence. What's yours? What's yours? The answer generally for most of you is nothing. You're sitting, you know, hold up in your little cubby hole or your office or whatever it is, and there's nobody staring over your shoulder. Nobody's going to tell you to stop. You're going to have to find a way to be accountable. That is the crux, the key to psychology. Why? Because changing core beliefs is not easy. Think about it like this. For the people that are in the chat room, I, I use this analogy all the time. So you're tired of hearing it. Being a trader, or I should say, being an undisciplined trader, better way to say it, being an undisciplined trader is no different than being an alcoholic. Okay? You know you should. Most alcoholics, right? What's the first step? Denial, right? You know, you have that dabda, denial, acceptance, okay? Bargaining. And what are the last two? I can't remember. But anyway, okay? Um, my point I'm making is, what... Do people that go through 12-step programs, what do they talk about? People, places, and things. People, places, and things, right? Some people, one of these days, people are going to think I'm like a recovering alcoholic or something. I'm not. It's just I use that because I think it's so appropriate for traders. There goes XYL. So you ask yourself, why did they go to AA meetings? For support. It's a support group. Why? Because they know when they're alone, their temptation supersedes what they know is right and wrong. Trading is no different. Your temptation is to get out too soon. Your temptation is to not take that stop loss. I'm right, okay? 
So how do you curb that temptation? Two ways. Have a support system and don't put yourself around it. See, here's the problem with trading that's different than alcoholics. Alcoholics can do a good job of avoiding places with alcohol. Now, you can do a good job of staying away from places that might cause you trouble, right? Cause you to get yourself into trouble. Traders can't, right? There it is. Denial, anger, barring, depression, acceptance. It's in the. It's actually in my course, Brian. It's just I forgot what, what some of them were. Um, anyway, thank you for putting that out there. So now as a trader, you have to hit this head on because your alcohol is actually trading, right? Your drug is the market. So how do you figure it out? You have to have people keep you accountable. Buddy system, chat room system, tell your spouse or a friend every day what you did. I lost money today. Tell them. Be public about it. Be open about it. I, I didn't take a stop loss today and it cost me $400. I should have lost 100, but I lost three times what I should have lost. Have somebody sit next to you. Record your trading every day. Record your trading every day. Okay? All of those things will help you get better, but it's still going to take time. It's going to be a while before you can walk into a bar and not order a beer. You understand the analogy. It's going to be a while before you can literally sit in front of your computer by yourself with nobody looking over your shoulder and do the right thing. It's going to be a while. Don't expect it to happen overnight. Okay? All right. Yep, don't have time for that. Yep, don't have time for that. Um, I'll go over this one real quick, guys. I want to get over. I want to go over level two here, and I don't want to be here, like I said, all day. Um, everything has a cause and effect, guys. You must determine why you do what you do, right? You have to determine that. So if you sell too soon, is it because you're scared to give back profits? Is it because you're trying to pay your mortgage with borrowed money, right? If you're scared to give back profits, is it because you need that money? Baby needs new shoes, okay? If you need the money, how can you overcome the issue? It's a decision tree, right? What's the problem? What's causing the problem? How do I solve the problem? Possibilities, just off these three simple examples. Get a part-time job. Cut back on your living expenses so maybe you don't need that extra thousand a month. Sell something of value. Get a full-time job. Borrow from your savings account, whatever it may be. But you need to figure out why you're doing it first. What's the why? Okay, and then we can figure out the how to change it. So most traders, they have this idea. They say they don't, but their actions, guys, your actions tell me everything. Your words mean nothing to me. Your actions are all that matter. Guys, technical chart masters are a dime a dozen. They are. I mean, I'm not kidding you. There are millions of people in this world that can teach you technical charts. But what is few and far between are genuinely profitable traders. Why? Because there are so many people that know the right thing but can't do the right thing. I'll repeat it. There are tons of people that know what the right thing is to do, but you can't do it. If Halle Berry is sitting in front of you, you know. If you're married, you know the right thing. Walk away. But you can't do it. That's trading in a nutshell. Okay, that is trading in a nutshell. You know the right thing, you just don't do it. So the question you ask yourself is why? Why? Why do you do what you do? Is it ego? Is it because you need that money? Is it because you really do deep down inside want to get rich quick and when somebody tells you this business is going to take you two years to get good at, you go, yeah, yeah, I know, no, I know, I know. But then your actions suggest you're trying to get good at it in two months. It'll take you one to three years to make money in this business. I just said it. One to three years is what it's going to take you to make money in this business. If you don't believe it, go to some one of those online gurus who can promise you riches in seven days. And when you blow up your account, come back and see me. Come back and see me. And I'll just say, I told you so. And I won't have sympathy for you because I told you so. All right? That's not being rude. I'm just telling you flat out the truth in the beginning. It's like a teenager. Traders are like teenagers. They're like alcoholic teenagers, Right? Yeah, Ma, yeah, Dad, I got it. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And guess what? 
they don't actually appreciate what you told them until they're about 30. They come back around and go, you know what? Mom wasn't so dumb. Man, dad wasn't so stupid. He kind of knew what he was talking about. Huh, imagine that. Traders are the same way. You guys are the same way. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then you do the opposite, okay? Took me seven months to work my progression plan to get past. I think you did it the right way. Jack, I talk to a lot of traders every day. I get a lot of emails every day. My inbox this morning had 97 emails in it, okay? Um, and I, I see the same consistent thing every single day. Every single day. I tell them the same thing, they do the opposite. I tell them the same thing, they do the opposite. Hey man, I have $2,000 to my name. Can you show me how to make $200,000 out of it in a year from nothing? Uh, no, I can't. All right. And then they go find somebody that says yes to them. And then they blow their $2,000 account. It's just a vicious cycle. And people wonder why the 1% are the 1%. Because they don't do the stupid stuff the other 99% do. Okay? So like it says here, sometimes the answer is not what you want to hear. Poor preparation, lack of operating capital, right? You might have to reproject your timeline, a lot of people think it's going to take, guys, I'm not going to go off on a tangent here, but I thought it was going to take about six months. I came into this business thinking, well, I, I worked on Wall Street, man. I know this stuff. You know, everybody else, they're, they're, those are the novice, you know. You know how they always talk about um, smart money and dumb money? I used to think everybody else in the world was dumb money because I worked on Wall Street where everybody has a massive ego. Massive ego. Okay, trust me, they do. Not everybody, but a lot of people. Okay. So you come into this, you're like, I'm going to get this. <laughs> Come on, these average Joes don't know nothing. I came playing with the big boys. Nope. My six month timeline turned into two years. Six months turned into two years, okay? So what if you didn't go get a part-time job? What if you didn't cut back on your living expenses? What if you didn't keep your day job? Your dream of becoming a great trader is now over. It's over because your timeline didn't match reality. Plain and simple, your timeline didn't match reality. That's it. Okay. All right. Last thing before I get into level two. Next topic is level two. Everybody's got outcome goals. Very few of you have process goals. Guys, I talk to traders all the time. It's always how much can I make? 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 That's the question I get all the time. I have this much money. How much can I make? I have this much money. How much can I make? How much can I make? That's your outcome. Without this, the process, Philadelphia 76ers, baby. No. Without the process, the outcome won't matter. You have to have a process to get to the outcome. It's your roadmap to get to your target location. Okay? That's it. Without the process, there is no outcome. And then when I tell people, well, it's going to cost you this much for education, this much for your monthly platform trading fees, okay? This much for commissions and about two years of your life. Oh, their get-rich-quick mentality, just their bubble just got popped. Their bubble burst. What do you think this is? Do you think this is magic? You think you just, is this, like, this is like a lottery ticket? You think you just listen to a 30-minute YouTube video and, oh my gosh, I'm going to make a million dollars? No. No and no again. But for all of you out there, okay, that say, well, that's what everybody says. Well, a lot of people do say that, but this is my take on it real quick. Just two seconds. Somebody told me this many, many years ago in a different business. It had nothing to do with trading. I said, man, when you, t when you club people over the head about what this business is about, they never stay. He goes, well, of course not. Because you're not appealing to their emotions. To get people in the door, you have to appeal to people's emotion. In any business, it doesn't matter what the business is. Why do you think people work on Wall Street? To make money. Okay. I remember my first day on the job. I remember it like clear as day. It's like 20 years ago. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay. Why are you here? And this is at our trading desk. There was 10 people on the trading desk. Okay. And the trade desk manager stood up and said, Jared's a new guy, blah, 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 blah. Some of you have met him, blah, 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 blah. Why are you here, Jared? What do you think I did? I gave him the chapter and verse line, the, the PC line, the political correct line, you know, that everybody gives. Oh, I just want to learn more about finance and Wall Street and blah, 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 BS, 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 BS. And they all laughed. And I was sitting there. They didn't say it, but I said, I'm thinking, what's so funny? 
Then she pointed, the desk manager was a woman, she pointed and said, why are you here? Guy who's been there 10 years. He goes, for the money? Pointed to somebody else. Why are you here? For the money? Why are you here for the money? And then one guy said, we're not saving whales here. All we're doing is turning over shares. I was on a buy side institutional trading desk. We're just turning over shares. We're not creating jobs. We're not saving the whales. We're just here for money. Now, is that a great goal in life? No, but that particular job was about money. It wasn't Greenpeace. It wasn't building someone's house. It wasn't putting an air conditioner on a roof. It was just simply to flip shares to make money. That's it. So my point, let me get back to the point. The point that I'm making, guys, is that you have to entice people with something just to get them to talk to you. Why does Pepsi use Beyonce in their commercials? Soda's not good for you. Why do they use Beyonce? To get you to think about Pepsi in a different way, right? Well, why do I show you great trades on YouTube and on the internet? To get you to think about trading as a business. And then once I get you, I'm gonna club you over the head like a baby seal. And I'm gonna tell you the truth about the business like I'm doing right now. This shit ain't easy. Okay, it's not, it's hard work. But if I told you that from day one, you'll just walk off. Gotta get you in the door first, okay? So we can talk about the great outcomes, but the process is all that really matters, okay? All right, let's talk a little bit about level two. Whew. Guys, without understanding level two, you won't, you won't be a trader. I can sit here and we can go back, right? And I will for a second. Let's go back. Let's take a look at, uh, yeah, let's take a look at this one. Whew, that's a sweet breakout. 64 bucks, pops and rips. If you don't understand level two, you're never getting filled on this. You're never, ever, ever getting filled. Is that a Taylor Swift song? We're never, ever, ever getting back together? Well, you're never, ever, ever getting filled. Breakouts, three bar plays, certain other types of plays are momentum plays. You guys saw today on, uh, I think it was FLR, right? I put my order at 0.98 and I got filled at 0.07, the top edge of my limit range. If you don't know what you're doing, you would have gotten completely skipped on that. Not even a bad fill like I, you would have gotten completely skipped. There are momentum trades. So why is level two important? Well, it helps you get better fills, helps you get a fill, then it helps you get better fills. Okay. It helps you keep your risk to reward consistent. So these are some of the things you need to consider. I'm going to put up some level twos in just a second. Okay. Some of the things you need to consider the volume of the stock you're trading. Is this a highly liquid stock or is this an illiquid stock? What's the price? What's the spread and whip? Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you together because generally, not always, but generally, the higher the price of the stock, the spreadier it is. The spread is simply the difference between buyers and sellers. Where the bid is and where the offer is, the ask is, right? Where the buyers are, where the sellers are. I want to buy the stock at $30. You want to sell it to me at $30.10. Somebody's got to step up. We either agree it to $30 or I pay up to $30.10. Okay? So the higher the price of the stock, more likely the spreadier and whippier it will be. That's not always the case. Sometimes you get a $5 biotech stock that's crazy. But generally... Amazon is going to be a lot spreadier than UA is going to be because one is $1,900 and the other one's $20, okay? The size of your stop loss. Some stocks you need $2 stop losses. You're going to need to give those stocks more room for entry. Some stocks you have a 10 cent stop loss. You don't want to give it too much room because then you're going to have a 15 or 20 cent stop loss severely hurting your risk to reward. The other thing to consider, how many shares are you trying to get here? You need 100 shares? No big deal. You need 10,000 shares? Now we're going to have to think about working the level two to make sure I get all my shares. Now, if you're trading Microsoft or Bank of America, no problem. But you're not getting 10,000 shares of XYL, you know, stock that Roy mentioned. You're not getting that unless you work the order. And then lastly, how badly do you want to get filled? Like how badly do you really want to get in this? You're thinking, well, what should that matter? Well, if you really want it badly, you might start your order a little earlier. You might give it a little more room. So these are considerations. These are six considerations 
when thinking about level two, ask yourself these questions. Is this a liquid stock, illiquid stock? Is it a high dollar or low dollar? Is it a spready stock, a whippy stock? How big is my stop loss? And is my risk to reward tight or is there a ton of room? Like say your risk to reward is two to one, your reward to risk, right? Say you need a dollar, but the stock has $10, okay? Well, that's no problem. I'm all still here, man. You're making me be on the mic all day and you're still here. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Unmalls tell me, I have a meeting today, Jared. I can't come on the mic. Some meeting you're in. Any hoot, all right? Next, what to look for. And then I'll show you, okay? I'll show you. You can see on the left here. The bid strength versus the ass strength. I call this the balance of power. Guys, I can't, I'm not trying to stroke myself. I can't tell you how valuable this information is, all right? The reason I'm saying this to you is there's so many places out there that will tell you buy here, sell there. Well, on paper, that looks like a really smart thing. Buy here, sell there. But you can't always buy here and sell there because of the spread, the liquidity or lack of liquidity, how many shares you need. Nobody talks about level two. Not nobody, just very few people talk about this topic. And yet it's one of, if not the single most important part of trading. Why? If you can't get filled, the trade is worthless. Let me repeat that because it bears repeating. If you can't get filled on a trade for the shares you want, shares you need, the trade is worthless. Am I wrong? Let's say you're trying to get 1,000 shares and you get filled for 50 shares. You're going to make 20 times less money on that trade if it works. So the trade is now effectively worthless to you. So getting filled on a trade is unbelievably important and getting filled where you want to get filled is incredibly important if not the trade's worthless so balance of power large ask small small bid not ready that means there's way more sellers than buyers it's not ready to go large bid small ask it's ready to pop i'm gonna don't worry i'm gonna show you in just a second the size of the spread this determines if you need to start your order sooner so a lot of times when we're trading a three bar play or a breakout, it's at a whole or a half number. And there's a lot of shares there. The book will tell you, okay? The book will tell you, hey, buy it at 5101. But that's above the breakout. You're not going to get filled. If you're trading Google, Apple, Amazon, and it's, you know, you want to buy it like at $1,001. You're not going to get filled. Okay. So the total shares you see at 51 and your share size. So if you need a lot of shares and you don't see a lot of shares, you better start your order sooner. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Okay. So here's a level two, a ladder style level two. Okay. There's two different types of level twos. Is I prefer the ladder style. Okay. What we have here is a stock that has 5,733 shares at 5589. Okay. Yeah, AMBD is, uh, I have to say, I've never seen a $200 stock do that before. And I've been doing, I've been trading a long, 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 long time, right? Um, wow, wow, 25% pop on this thing. Anyway, back to the point at hand. 5,733 shares, those are the buyers. That's how many buyers are out there. Sure, there could be hidden shares there. The sellers are up here at 56, 53,000 shares they're showing. So not only do we have an 11 cent spread, right? The spread between the buyers and the sellers is 11 cents. But there are 10 times more sellers than buyers. The stock's not ready to pop yet, right? 11 cents spread, weak bid, not ready. Same stock, same stock. Now what? Notice the buyers have creeped up and creeped up. They're willing to pay more. Down here, the buyers were not willing to pay more than $55.89. And the sellers were not willing to sell below 56. So what's happened? The buyers started creeping up, creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. The buyers are starting to say, you know what? I'm going to have to pay up for this stock. If I really want it, I'm going to have to pay up. The sellers aren't budging. We're going to have to pay up. It's kind of like, I don't know, when you're at a car dealership and you really want a car and the guy says, hey, the price is $55,000. And you're like, but I only want to pay $53,000. Let's meet in the middle at 54. No, 55 is my number. 
you got to pay 55 if you want the car. The buyers here have to pay 56 if they want this stock. So moves up, moves up. Now what? Not only have the buyers moved up and are willing to pay more money, there's a more of them. 16,000 now instead of 5,700. Three times more buyers. And notice 53,000, 25 or 27,000. See this 23,000 here? See the 56? These are the shares that have already printed. What's happening? The buyers are starting to pay up. They're starting to pay up. They're starting to pay up. They're starting to pay up. They are chewing through the sellers. And when this 27,000 shares disappears, this stock will pop. Now, how does that relate to you and your trading? Let's say you want to buy a stock at $56. And the book says, get in at 5601 with a stop at 5550. You're not getting filled at 5601. I'll show you in a minute. Don't worry. I will show you. Okay. You're not getting filled here. There's only 1,200 shares here. You need 1,000 of them. You think you're the only person on the planet that needs those shares? No, there's hundreds of other people that want to buy this stock. What are you going to have to do? You're going to have to put your order at 99 or 00. If you really want this stock, if you really want to get filled, you're going to have to buy it at 99 or 00. If you don't, you will get skipped or get filled really late. Watch. It's the same stock, guys. These are real-time P&Ls. I, I took pictures, okay? If you didn't get some shares at 99 or 00, then you probably didn't get filled. Perhaps you were fortunate and got a partial fill, which would have likely been at 56.10. Guys, at 01, it printed no shares. At 02, it printed 100. So if it printed zero shares at 01, how did you get filled at 01? The answer is you didn't. I love when I go into other chat rooms, all right? I love this one. It's one of my faves where they're like, oh yeah, guys, I'm in this trade at 5601. And then I'm looking at the level two going, no shares printed there. How the hell did you get that? They didn't. They're lying to you, okay? That's why I put my level two up for all to see every day, okay? There was no shares printed there. Don't tell me about dark pools, okay? I don't want to hear it. 5602, 5603. Guys, up to 5610, look, what is this? Maybe... 3,000 shares printed in a 10 cent range, right? You're not going to get that many of them. Say you needed 1,000 shares, 2,000 shares, only 3,000 printed. You're likely getting filled up here, okay? You would have had to have started your order at 98, 99, or 00. Now, do you see how important level two is? Now, why is this important, guys? Why? Well, let's do a little math for a second. Okay. Let's call it uh, 5570. Okay. Intended entry stop. So your intended entry is 5601. Your intended stop is 5570. So 31 cent stop. Okay. If you got filled at 5610, sorry. Okay, you got filled 30% late, right? You had a 30 cent stop and you got filled 10 cents late. That's 30%, a little more than that, maybe 31, 32, okay? So now what? Now your risk is also 30% bigger, isn't it? If this stock immediately pulls back against you, immediately, pops, drops, you're not going to lose 31 cents. You're going to lose 41 cents. So if you had a thousand shares, you're no longer losing $310. You're losing $410. You're going to lose 30% more money if it stops out. And your target's now 10 or 20 cents further away. Let's say your target, okay? Target was 56.62, right? Two to one. 31 cent stop times two, so it's really 63, 56, 63, my bad, All right? 56, 63, okay? Now, your target is what? 10, 20 cents higher. Why? Because you got filled later, so that you're automatically 10 cents higher, and you times that by two. So even if you raise your stop to 56, 80 and still have a 30 cent stop, you still need a 62 cent gain but you got filled late. 
Wow, right? 56.75-ish, give or take. Now your target's bigger because you got filled later. Are you guys understanding how important getting filled on level two is? Not only getting filled, because if you don't get filled, you don't get any shares, but then getting filled late, how it changes the entire trade. Changes everything, okay? Level two is one of the most important topics you'll discuss in trading. Nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. Okay, another example. 1,100 shares at 50.89. 900 shares at 50.99. And there's, the, there's the rub, 51, 17,000. Okay, right there. Big spread. Not ready to go yet. It's not ready to pop. Now, buyers have stepped up. Buyers said, you know what? We're willing to pay up. So the 1,100 shares went to 6,400 shares. And there's still 15,000 here. You're likely not going to get filled above 01. And if you do, it will be five or 10 or 15 cents late. The problem most of you are having is you're using market orders to get in. So when a stock is really spready and whippy, you're getting filled 50 cents late, 30 cents late. You know I'm right when I say this because you know you've done it. Do not use market orders to enter your trades. Do not use market orders or stop market. Use a stop limit order to enter your trades. Here, use stop limit orders to enter your trades all the time, period. Okay? Now, take a look at this for a second. Take a look at the volume here and the volume here. These are four, okay, four level twos. 59,000 shares of 49, 281,000 of 50. What's above it? Garbage. Now you're going, that's a lot of shares. Not for this stock, it's not. Not for this stock, it's not. So if you don't get in at 50, you're getting filled at 55. And this almost guaranteed is going to be like a 10 or 15 cent stop loss. Why? Because it's so liquid. You can tell. Here's another example. 802,000 shares at 55.00. If you don't get 99 or 00, you're not getting any at 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. You're not. It's just going to skip you. Right? It's just going to skip you. Let's go back and take a look. It's going to do this to you. It's going to do this to you. Okay? Guaranteed. All right. You don't believe me? Take a look at this one at 170, right here, all the way to the right hand side. 55,000 shares printed at OO, and now what? Nothing. Nothing. Not nothing, but very few shares. Look at this one here at 175. 19,000 shares fills at 175. 100, 100, 100, 400, 100. Nothing. Garbage. You're not getting filled. Okay, let's take a look again. These are all stocks that printed huge at the whole or half number. And then when they popped, the spread opened up and they printed garbage. If you did not get in before it broke, you weren't going to get filled. Okay? You weren't going to get filled. Look at the spread on this thing. Are you kidding me? It's a 40 cent spread. I won't even trade it because the spread's too big. You have to understand where the buyers and sellers are at all times. Why? Because it's going to let you know where you need to get in. It's going to let you know where you need to get in. Here's another one, okay? A little bit older. Look at this, 177.50. Guys, it's a perfect three bar play. It's a perfect, 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 perfect textbook three bar play. Wide range bar, narrow range bar, drop. Wide bar, narrow bar, drop. Look, you're not getting filled. Unless you take 50 or 51. You're not getting filled, okay? Here's another example, all right? This is a highly liquid stock. This one, you probably don't have to anticipate. Look how liquid it is. Look how thick it is. You probably don't have to anticipate it. Okay. See above it, 46,000, 41,000, 52,000. You don't have to take this at 34. You can put your order at 35 or 36. You're going to get filled because there's so many shares here. But on a stock like this, you're not going to get filled. Okay, I hope that makes sense, guys. All right, I do. I hope it makes sense. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. It's about an hour lecture, guys. Um, there's a lot more to learn on level two, okay? But that should teach you some of the basics, right? In professional trading strategies, 
the order entry chapter is the single biggest chapter in the book. All right, for those of you that have taken professional trading strategies, that is of 550 pages, it's the biggest chapter in the entire book is level two and order entry. Why? Because there's just so much to learn, right? You have to understand how to get filled on trades. And these are some of the things that you wanna consider when you do it, okay? So I'm gonna wrap that up there, all right? To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.